My earliest memories are of gender dysphoria. I felt lost and at times like I couldn't survive. It took until I was 31 to publicly come out as a transgender woman. Nothing has been the same since. While on the road, I've met gender variant people from all walks of life, all at various points in their journeys. Hearing their stories and then being able to relate myself to it is what I need right now. By the time I was 30 years old, I had done everything I had set out to do. I had taken my band from playing in basements to playing stadiums and arenas, married, had a kid, had a house, everything you really could ever want. But when it came down to it, that didn't make the dysphoria go away. And if I didn't address what was going on, that I was going to end up killing myself. Laura, from the time she was really little, people would always say, that is a beautiful child. She was very gentle. She wouldn't fight back as a kid, and I was always worried about it, that she would be, be picked on because she was just very non-confrontational. With having a father in the military and being a military brat and moving around, that's a hard life. You know, of course, it's all about conforming, and, it, and that, that's not just for the, the soldier, that's for the wife and the children. You are definitely expected to fit in. I think Laura had a hard time adjusting when we moved to Naples. For one thing, it was a bad divorce, and she came in the middle of a school year. It was fifth grade. We had nowhere to live, and I had $500. She didn't fit the norm of Naples. Um, she dressed really differently. Um, she was constantly changing the hairstyles, everything from mohawk to the, I think they're called the Liberty Spikes, where she would do super glue to um, keep them up, and she looked different, so to speak. My mom has seen my band play countless times, and not even just this band, but the bands I was in previous to it, down to the very first time I ever played live with any kind of band. She's always been there, and anytime we play close to where she lives, she always you know, comes out to the show. Yeah, the first show I ever did, we all sat on chairs backwards. <laughs> so oh my God, I forgot about that. did an acapella that. version of Bohemian grandma Rhapsody. Grandma was there. Yeah, okay, everyone's oh, yeah. grandma was <laughs> Everybody, there. <laughs> <that> was... <laughs> I got into punk rock when I was like 13 years old, and I started getting beat up a lot. And what attracted me to punk initially was that it seemed like the attitude was more about fighting back. I recall when Laura was first attracted to punk pretty much by the time we moved back to Florida. And then she started into the more, the louder stuff, so to speak. We met on the first day of high school. I remember there were like two like glass doors you walked out of a hallway where I came from my class to get there. And I just saw a green mohawk run past. And I was like, another punk. I'm not alone at high school. There's another punk. We just all became friends pretty quickly because there weren't a lot of punks in Naples, Florida. I think by lunch hour, you know, we had found each other and, and we were friends. I think that Laura was able to build a relationship with James because they felt like outsiders. We've been homeless together, we've gotten arrested together, we've been in fights together, especially starting out like, you know, young, poor, punk kids. I guess I named it when I was 16 or 17, and I, I don't remember the moment. I don't remember, like, why I chose it, but I'm looking back, I mean, it's kind of obvious that I felt like the whole world was against me, so. She was frequently thrown out of school, and then she was frequently arrested. She was arrested at the beach. They hogtied her and, and took her to jail. She wasn't allowed to call me. I didn't know where she was. And they had really abused her. I took it to court and the attorney had said, you'll win, that it was way roughed up by the police and you have such a case and I lost. I think a lot of Laura's lyrics were as a result of the situations that she encountered specifically in, in Naples. I definitely was a troubled teen and I gave my mom a lot of grief. I knew that this was a great kid, that this was someone who had a fantastic heart and spirit, that there was not anything bad about her. But I knew that if she got sucked into that system, I would never be able to get her out. 
So I left Naples. I got out. I toured the world. I was lucky enough to work with record labels of all size. Had the chance to tour with bands that I'd grown up listening to and thrown into surreal situations I never could have imagined myself being in. When I got there, it just it wasn't enough. I got really, really f***ed up on drugs and struggled really hard with that. At the same time, I was really, really struggling with dysphoria. And it was always that cycle. It was that cycle of intense feelings of dysphoria coupled with intense feelings of guilt and shame and then suppressing it and like trying to focus on something else, but it always coming back. I cleaned up and I got healthy. I went through a total purge of like, I am a male, this is who I am, and I'm gonna commit to being this person who I'm perceived to be in this band, this front singer or whatever. I completely like just focused everything mentally on being in a band. You know, we were gonna go on tour, we were gonna sign to a major label, and that was it. You know, there, that would be enough. And for a while, it was. It was totally distracting. I didn't have a second to think about anything else, you know? I didn't consciously feel like I was living a lie because I, you know, I swore it off. As my personal life then started to develop, all those feelings came back, you know? I was able to suppress them for like three years, but they all came back. They always came back. And it took me until I was probably like 30 to realize this will never change. This will always be like this. This is who I am and I, I need to deal with that. I realized that I wasn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a trans person. I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not any longer. You can classify someone as trans, genderqueer, whatever you want. But when it comes down to it, they're just people.